Hey BookTube, it's Chelsea's Reads here. So I am taking the challenge um, started by author Lauren Willig, Willig um, and that is every month of this year I am going to read one book in her Pink Carnation series in order to have reread the entire series by the end of this year. So we've reached the end of February and that means I read book two in her series, and that being The Mask of the Black Tulip. So in the first book we find out that college grad student Eloise Kelly, I think her last name is, isn't her last name, but she is digging through the archives of a family um, in order to find out who the Pink Carnation was. Um, and this takes place in the Napoleon era. era. So she's going through these old letters and diary entries um, and to figure out this mystery. So, of course, it's like a story within a story. So in the first book, we found out that um, Amy Valcourt had passed on the mantle after she got married um, to her friend or cousin Jane um, and she married Richard who was formerly the spy known as the Purple Gentian. Um, however, Amy decides to open up a school for spies and who better to invite than Richard's own sister Henrietta. So Henrietta is actually the main heroine of this book and she is absolutely adorable. She's so much fun. Um, this book is a friends to lovers trope. Um, the hero uh, to go with our heroine is Miles Dorrington, who is Richard's best friend. So there's a lot of drama of, you know, he's attracted to his best friend's little sister kind of a thing, um, and he's just used to be more of a chaperone. Somebody looks after her after balls, and uh, he's just, like, can't comprehend the feelings he has from her. Um, as the title suggests, the Black Tulip comes into play. The Black Tulip is actually the nemesis. Um, it's a rival spy. They all suspect it's Lord Vaughn. He just came back from France. Like, He's kind of suave and mysterious, um, and all things are pointing towards him. There's a lot of, like, mistaken identity things. There's a lot of, like, jealousy and adorable misunderstandings and misconnections throughout this one. Friends to Lovers is actually not a trope that I enjoy too much, but I really dug this one. Um, it's not too long. It doesn't take... It took me about a week to finish it. Um, Eloise and Colin, um, in the modern day, they're story progressed pretty nicely with Eloise trying to flirt with him and being unsuccessful because, as she said, she's a little bit out of practice. Um, so that was cute. Um, yeah, there's really not much to say. Um, if you haven't read the series, I suggest jumping on. Lauren Willig every month is going to have a discussion on the books, and I just find that super adorable. Um, if you have read it, this is a good time to reread it. And again, you can jump in on this discussion and just get involved. And like I said, Lauren Willick is running this. She's the author of the series, and it's absolutely brilliant. Um, each book, you kind of just see one of the characters from this little, like, story, like, takes on such a new heroine and hero in every book. Um, yeah, I think this one was really good. And like I said, I'm not even a friends to lovers. Like, it's not even, like, a trope that I enjoyed. But I really enjoyed this one. Next month, we're going into book three. Um, in book three, we're actually going to Ireland. So it's a little bit of a change of scenery as well. Um, and another one of Richard's friends takes up the hero role in that one. Um, but like, again, mistaken identity, hilarious situations. There's a couple times actually left out loud um, in a good friends to lovers story. So um, yeah, just a quick video. I guess it's going to be even under five minutes, but cheers, guys, and happy reading. Thanks.